Hi guys, just going to show you a little bit of my finished Marsh Generator kit here. Um, I attached the Marsh Generator board using the vertical elbow mounts to a an old trash PCB that was scrap. Um, it pretty much worked pretty well for this. And uh, I used the same kind of screws that I recommended in my other video on the uh, board there. And uh, I just so happened to have some bolts that fit the other side. So it worked out kind of nice. Um, and I'm also using some risers for the voltage multiplier. And you know, it, it looks cool. Um, and I use some black wire there, got to stick with the black. Um, and everything looks cool with the black, so stuck with that. And uh, for my spark cap here, I just used some uh, copper wire that I had laying around. Probably used something thicker, but uh, I figured that the the pointier the better for this and I'm just starting out with oh that's like maybe less than half an inch or half an inch or so and I'll move up from there and uh, let's see I'm powering this thing from my AC line which is 120 volts um, well actually I'm it's attached to a variac here plugged into a variac so I can slowly crank up the voltage just for testing purposes and I can put in a little bit more than 120 volts um, I did do a test before I did this video, and I got the spark gap up, up at the top here to jump about three times once every, let's say, eight seconds or so is a good estimate. And uh, the power in was only about 105 to 100 on the Variac when the first spark jumped. Um, and it, like I said, it only sparked three times, and then it stopped sparking. Uh, didn't do anything after that and I left the power on just to observe it for about 20-30 seconds or so and nothing happened so I don't really know why that is and I'm going to show you my spark gaps on the back here if I can I got a drill press in the way so it's going to be kind of hard to maneuver um, and focus okay not really but as you can see I bent the leads for the spark gaps and um, since my camera sucks at zooming I can't really show you the distance between them but okay there we go oh, hold on close well anyways the distance between those spark gaps is about the size of the leads themselves which is probably one and a half millimeters or so maybe one millimeter um, I, I first I tried it a little bit larger than this maybe double that size two to three millimeters and I got no results at all so I figured um, to decrease the distance between the spark gaps and maybe that will have an effect. And it did. I got, I got the uh, spark to jump between here. But I really don't know why it stopped. So I'm going to plug in the power for you guys and see if I can get something on video. But I, I have no idea. So uh, here we go. And we're at 90 volts in on the Variac. 100. There we go. There's one. There's two. I don't know if you can actually... I can't really see this on the camera, but I can hear it. There's, there's another one. Okay, so we are at 104 on the Variac. Oh, it kind of just... I don't know if you heard that. Oh, there we go. I don't know if you heard that one. It was very weak. Nothing actually. I think that's one of the spark caps firing actually. There we go. So yeah, I might just have to tweak with the spark caps. That might just be the uh, the issue there. Um, so yeah, like I said, in the Variac, I don't know if you can see the... God dang, this camera. Well anyways, yeah, it's at about 105 volts in. An AC line. My camera sucks, in case you haven't noticed. And uh, I'm also monitoring the voltage at the first capacitor. So, and I don't know if you could hear, but yeah, it stopped jumping. So yeah, it jumped, you know, a few good times, but now it's not jumping anymore. So I don't really know why that is. I might just have to tweak around with everything a little bit. Um, I'm uh, very interested to see and hear what the results are from everyone else so 
Let me know what you think and let me know what your results are. Thanks for watching.